Hello, I'm Focus Wire Editor-in-Chief Mitra Sorrells, and today I am joined by Bashkara Guntredi. He is Vice President of Product Management for Retail Intelligence and Revenue Optimization at Sabre. Welcome. Thank you, Mitra. So in the next few minutes, we will be talking about offer optimization in the airline industry. And to give our viewers some context, I want to start by mentioning that you are an industry veteran. Uh, prior to joining Sabre a little over two years ago, I know that you spent about two decades in the airline industry, specifically at Etihad and Emirates, working in revenue management, forecasting, and leading an innovation team at Etihad. So I think I think that's some important context uh, to get us started. And so now as we start to get into this conversation, you know, as I've been thinking about this, airlines have really been talking about the fact that personalization is a critical strategy to unlock revenue and to elevate the customer experience for many, many years. Um, can you start by just explaining briefly what is meant by the phrase offer optimization? Uh, offer optimization, simply to say, is like what products to offer and what was the price of the bundle, right? Like th that is offer optimization. In order to do a good or most relevant offer or the best value offer, right? Personalization information is important and personalization can be at different levels. So I, I would say the dynamic offers, right? Like consists of basically one is done dynamic pricing, continuous pricing, and, and uh, the dynamic bundling. So uh, why offer optimization is important is like dynamic pricing, we all know airlines have been doing for many years with RBDs. And why the new part of dynamic pricing is ability to adjust the fares like without filing fares and overcoming the constraints of the RBDs, right? The 26 RBDs, what we have, like th that is a big step for the airlines. And the second one is continuous pricing is like generating the indefinite price points, like without filing fares again. And what it means is like, it enables airlines to match the, uh, the offering, like the pricing of the offers to the demand. And dynamic offers is again, like identifying, knowing the customer and then constructing the offer and providing the offer that converts more like so what we see is like a, a big amount of revenue value creation for the airlines and as well as customers the mckinsey study says like approximately seven seven dollars per year per customer is what the value proposition is there okay so you know as we start to think about this then clearly as i said in, in that introduction you know the airlines have been talking about this for many years why is it so hard to achieve uh, because like airlines don't own the customer data uh, and if you look at the distribution, right, like 80% of the distribution, are, it varies from airline to airline, the most of the distribution is uh, outside of the airline. Now airlines are taking control with NDC, so they will know more of the customer information, like where they can generate the most relevant or I would say best value for the money offers. So th this is uh, a, a what I would say a paradigm shift for airlines to with the NDC enabling, knowing about the customer and generating the most relevant offer. In the past, that has been very difficult to do. And also the sparse data, of, like whenever you do international travel, like not many people do international travel, right? So, and even collecting the data also was very siloed and you never had a 360 degree view of the customer and shopping data you don't even know like meaning because like most of the shopping data is not available so you don't even know the emerging trends so like how do you translate or modify your offer right to changing market dynamics so uh, this has been a challenge but with the ndc and uh, airlines able to take the control of the offer you would be able to do a better personalization okay so maybe we're starting to enter in a new era as we think about this, then what are some practical ways that airlines can really begin to make their retailing strategies more personalized? Uh, before we start, uh, Mitra, like what I want to say is like uh, generally for airlines, right? Uh, personalization means like one to one uh, people talk about it. But what I find is uh, the trust of the customer is super important, right? Like meaning if I give personalized data, if I'm at a disadvantage, like people don't want to share the personal information or like, what about you, right? So what I feel is like, uh, there is an unknown customer and a known customer. 
uh, for an unknown customer, right? You use the trip purpose segmentation, like meaning uh, where the customer is flying, what is the length of the stay, when you are booking the flight and uh, what time you are departing and when you are coming back. All this information enables you to do a trip purpose segmentation. So generating offer like at this level, and then once the customer identifies himself right you you again reprice the offer that way the customers feel trust i like, cannot sharing the data like meaning that enables them to open up and share data that is what i see so uh, i just wanted to add personalization because like everybody thinks like to the most granular level but most of the right. time when people shop it is anonymous right like we all know it's anonymous shopping and and there is not enough information. Again, government regulations are there, like where you can use, what you can use and all of this. So what the way I, I would say people have to approach personalization is first is at a triple purpose segmentation. And when you have more information of the customer, right, then you again uh, provide that ability to uh, customize the offer and create a best value offer. Okay, yeah, that, that is uh, interesting to think about it in those terms. And I suppose it, it's also a bit of a kind of a, just a shift in mindset and, and cultural shift for the airlines, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, coming back to your question, like I, I just uh, I, I answered the personalization question. Uh, what I would say is like, uh, first is uh, you have to create a roadmap, right? Like airlines have to create a roadmap for retailing. What do you want to do today and where do you want to go, right? What is your North Star of retailing? And organizations have to align both technology and the business teams uh, to the new strategy and start now, right? Like meaning uh, you can't wait for completely to migrate to offer order, like to reap benefits. What I would say is uh, take an approach of offer optimization, uh, separating out from uh, shopping or offer construction. What it enables is like implement now, get benefits. Like what we have seen is with the dynamic pricing and continuous pricing. Uh, you, you see a 3% uh, revenue uplift for uh, right to fly and a 10% revenue uplift in the ancillaries. So what it enables airlines is to start with this, get the benefits, fund the offer order migration so that you can do diverse content and then uh, the whole nine yards of retailing right so th this is what i would recommend for those that, for those that are starting i didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah yeah so you know certainly there are some airlines that are much more advanced in their personalized retailing journey what advice would you have for those airlines as to how they can kind of take it to the next level so these are the airlines which are like mega carriers, uh, like who have a data science team or a data engineering team or a big OR team, right? So most of these airlines wants to stick their like secret sauce with themselves. So what I would say is like pick up a provider who can enable bring their own models and bring their own data set, right? Like th that is very important. So where they can test multiple models at the same time and evaluate the performance, that, that is one. And the second one is, in order for offer optimization or dynamic pricing or continuous pricing, right, to be accepted within the company, like meaning within the airlines and as well as outside, right, it is important to know what AIML models are doing, right? So you have to take a glass box approach rather than a black box approach. So at any point of time, you want to know why this offer has been generated, right? Like you know the information and explainable AI, what we call. So you, you should be able to understand why this offer has been generated. And then if there are any things like which related to government regulations around AI, like you can tweak and then uh, again, uh, improve the model, right? So this, this is again, another big area of focus. Uh, the other one, what I would say is a value measurement framework airlines have to build, like because how you are performing on your retailing strategy, right? This is very important to have the value measurement framework. So this would enable the airlines to track like how they are progressing in their journey. That is another thing what I would add. And uh, continuous learning, right? Like this is key again. Uh, is very important and how you collect the continuously data and do the basically regenerating the most relevant offer and the best value offer for the customer right uh, today our focus is the lowest price in my view like as you go along like i would say best value offer so the customer trusts and comes to you right like meaning what you packaged as the products and how you present it to them and what do they see value like for me we should move from the lowest price to the best value for the money 
Okay, it's certainly very complex and interesting right now um, with everything that's happening in this arena. And it's also clear that there really isn't a one size fits all solution here. So as you think about the different paths that airlines are taking as they pursue uh, personalized retailing, what stands out to you as far as their success and execution and also how they can really stand out as unique in the eyes of travelers? So from an execution perspective, what I would say is generating the most relevant offer and the best value offer, right? Again, I come back to the best value offer. That is one. And it's not just generating the best value offer and uh, converting it into a uh, offer into a uh, order. Uh, what I would say is like, how do you fulfill the offer promise? Right. This is super important. If you generate a great offer, but if you are not able to fulfill the promise again, uh, it's an unfair failure, right? Like execution failure. That, that is what I would say. And uh, the other one is like customers are looking at uh, uh, customers needs to have a trust, right? To share the personal data that it is secure. That is one. And the second one is like I, I'm getting the best value from the by sharing my personal data and where, where I am getting the best value offer or not, that is another thing. And ye, convenience and ease of use, right? Like th these are the three factors, I would say, uh, that defines the success of the retailing. Yeah, I mean, certainly as we think back on these recent years and some of the complications that customers have faced and uh, in their traveling journey, I think that piece about convenience and ease of use is is really an important one. So we are out of time. Bhaskara Guntredi from Sabre, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us about offer optimization. Thank you.